Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. Today's video is a species profile of an isopod that deserves more attention. The curly or teardrop isopod, Silisticus convexus. After an introduction to this species, I'll describe its care, how to house it, and then go into its value as a biocustodian for enclosures of other animals. At that point, I'll look into the pet or hobby potential of this isopod. Silisticus convexus is different from most of the isopods we're familiar with in a few ways. Though it can conglobate or roll itself up into a ball, it doesn't do so quite as completely as the more familiar Armadillidium species, and it's likely that both of its common names, curly and teardrop isopod, derive from the roughly oval shape of its conglobated body. As you've no doubt seen, Armadillidium genus, in contrast, rolls into a more spherical shape. Silisticus convexus is also a faster moving isopod than most Armadillidium, and generally doesn't stay conglobated for very long. It prefers to run and hide itself, often by burrowing into the substrate. I would classify it as a small to medium sized isopod. I've been keeping it for several years, and I've never seen a specimen reach the size of a large Armadillidium vulgari. Like many familiar isopods, Silisticus convexus originates in Europe, but is now well established in North America as well as other locations. I suspect that it is not often identified as Silisticus convexus when it's seen, just because most people who see it just think of it as a roly-poly. Some species of isopods are now available in a dazzling array of morphs. This is not one of those. I keep two forms of the curly isopod. The first is the wild type, which is mostly a moderately glossy gray color. I collected the ancestors of my current colony years ago in my backyard. At the time, I wasn't sure which species it was, so a little foray into bugguy.net helped me figure it out. That was many isopod generations ago. The other form of this isopod that I keep really is a stunning little creature. This morph is known as Ukraine Pied. My stock came from smugbug.com. Its name gives a broad hint as to its origin and to its pattern, but did not prepare me for the very interesting and intricate patterning that these have. Porcelio scaber dalmatian, one of the most common pied isopods in the hobby, is sometimes well marked, but individuals often feature very low expression of the pied trait. Silisticus convexus, Ukraine pied, on the other hand, often has really high expression and very rich and intricate patterning. A number of years ago, another pied morph of Silisticus convexus with very different patterning from the one I just showed you appeared. Invertebrate Dude was working with it, and he allowed me to share these pictures with you. Thanks, Invertebrate Dude. Unfortunately, this morph did not breed true, and this basically means that it was not heritable, or that it could not be passed on to future generations with any degree of regularity. As far as I know, those are the only forms of this species that are or have been moderately well known in the hobby, though I have heard that there are others in the works. Before we cover the care and housing of Silisticus convexus, I'd like to recognize those amazing people who have chosen to support me on Patreon. Your pledge helps me make more videos about more interesting creatures than I ever could without your help. If you'd like to contribute for as little as $1 a month, please click the link at the end of this video. And my thanks to all of you, using the affiliate links in the description, shopping at the Aquarimax website, or just watching my videos are all good ways to help. Now, let's go into the care and housing needs for the curly or teardrop isopod. The first thing that you should know is that this isopod is undemanding. It doesn't seem to be very particular about ventilation or a moisture gradient, but of course it does need some sort of hydration station. If you set up a standard isopod substrate and enclosure with moderate ventilation and a moisture gradient, this species will thrive for you. If you set up an enclosure that is all on the damper side with minimal ventilation, this species will also thrive. Like I said, undemanding. For some in-depth information on setting up an isopod enclosure, check out my isopod care video here. In fact, it's part of a whole playlist on isopod care, so if you haven't seen that series, I highly recommend it. Silisticus convexus is a burrower, so a little depth to the substrate doesn't hurt. Cork bark or other suitable hides are appreciated as well. Interestingly, this species does seem to gnaw cork bark a little more voraciously than other species. Not as fast as they would with rotted oak, for example, but fast enough that this piece of cork bark 
is a lot smaller than it was when I first put it in the enclosure. This species of isopod will eat a wide variety of food, unsurprisingly. Vegetables such as sweet potato or squash are eaten just as readily as fish food pellets or other proteinaceous fare. This is a fairly prolific species once it gets going. It doesn't breed as fast as, say, powder blues or dairy cows in my experience, but it is faster than quite a few others, and it doesn't seem to reproduce seasonally just year-round. A six-quart tub or even smaller is a fine enclosure to start out with until you notice a lot of reproduction and you need to upgrade. You might be wondering whether this species is a good bioactive cleanup crew member. Well, it's adaptable to a wide variety of moisture, humidity, and ventilation levels. It hides well, so it's not extremely likely to be eaten by the macrofauna in your enclosure. It reproduces well, but not so well that it will overwhelm your vivarium. And it has a good appetite, yet lacks a reputation for being harmful to macrofauna and vivaria. So my question is, why isn't this species more popular in bioactive setups? It really should be. It's probably one of the best go-to isopod options. If you've kept this species in a bioactive vivarium, let me know in the comments about your setup and your opinion of this species as a biocustodian. And now, let's look at this species as a hobby isopod. I'll be honest, the wild type is not particularly stunning to look at, and it's one of those shy species that tends to scurry away and burrow when disturbed. So, the wild type just doesn't have a lot of pet potential. However, the Ukraine pied morph is so unique that I find myself looking forward to opening the enclosure every single time I need to maintain it. So, the Ukraine pied morph has a little bit more going for it as a pet. Still, it's not a great choice for a display isopod just because it tends to hide and burrow immediately when you open the enclosure. To sum up, if you're seeking a bioactive cleanup crew isopod that can work in a wide variety of vivarium conditions, Silisticus convexus just might be the species you want. If you'd like a colorful active display species that will parade around the enclosure during the light of day and take food straight from your fingers, check out my video on Porcelli ornatus, which is part of a growing playlist of isopod species profiles I've been working on. And after you've watched those, come back here and let me know in the comments which species I should feature next. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets with lots of isopod content. Please feel free to rate, share, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Tap the bell so you don't miss my next video.